You know, Rick, I would consider myself a pretty passionate sports fan. I had no idea these players are, are virtually not paid. No, they're not. And, you know, at the root of it, journalism, in my mind, and I think probably yours too, is about trying to uh, give people who don't have any power a voice. And junior hockey players across the country clearly fit that description. You know, you have players who come up through a system. They end up playing for teams that are for-profit enterprises mm -hmm. that are making millions of dollars in revenue. But you still have owners saying, hey, we can't afford to pay players because if we do, we're going to go out of business. So it just almost begs for journalists to dig into those numbers and see just how true those claims are. Now, your background really began in news. You were in foreign postings for newspapers. Now you find yourself in this very exclusive club, perhaps being one of the only sports investigative journalists in this country. But that's a smaller pond to play in. You're going to be running into these people that you're covering much more frequently. Does that make the job more difficult? Um, I would say it's not an easy job. It's, you know, obviously it's not easy to confront Gary Bettman when every other reporter in the room wants to talk about, um, you know, good news stories for the league, or and at least seems to. Are they going to the Olympics? Are they going to the Olympics or not? That's a, a story that the NHL can manage very well. But when you're confronting the commissioner at a breakfast like we just saw in Nashville at the All-Star Game, and you're telling him that you've talked to retired players who are now struggling through early onset dementia, who don't have enough money to call 911 because when they have a seizure and they need to go to the hospital, they can't afford to pay the ambulance to take them there. That's a, a bit of a different situation and it really does put you on the outs with these leagues very quickly if you pursue you know, repeated stories. And it's such a disconnect with what most of us attach to pro sports, which is nothing but money and largesse and, and look how well they're living. Does that say then that the world of sports in general needs more scrutiny for all of us to get a clearer picture of what the reality is for many of these players across very different kinds of sports? Well, I think so, and only because sports is just another uh, industry like any other. We have reporters who cover uh, you know, the auto industry and the tech industry and all levels of government in Canada. Sports on its own is a billion dollar industry. We know that every year the National Hockey League generates four billion dollars. So that begs for more critical reporting. So why hasn't that happened, do you think? Why isn't this a beat that exists everywhere in an aggressive way? I don't know. I think maybe the, the, the changing nature of media right now, newspapers have all scaled back. You know, you're starting to see some of them aren't even sending their reporters on road trips with teams. Right. And truth is, uh, it takes time. So you might have a reporter say, well, I can file a story on the team practice today and talk about Austin Matthews with the Toronto Maple Leafs breaking a rookie scoring record, it's much faster to deliver that story than for me to dig into a story, for instance, on whether NHL team doctors have a conflict of interest because on one hand they're trying to give players the best medical advice they can about when they should return to action and to the ice. On the other hand, they're also reporting and working for team owners who have a vested interest in trying to get those guys right back on the ice. Well, good on TSN for investing in it and good on you for doing it. Oh, thank you. Thanks.